Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to mourn the loss of a friend to many and a companion to one. This was Phil. And today, Phil trimmed his last facial hair. Thank you, Phil. You will be missed. Stupid thing. Oh, you guys are here for Pokemon draft content, right? My bad. All right, now that the funeral's over, we can get back to Pokemon. We are in week five of the UPA, and this week we are up against Jack and his... I'm not saying the team name. I'm not gonna do it. Sorry, it's too offensive. You guys can maybe figure it out from the logo and the thumbnail, which I designed, unfortunately. But despite having a god-awful team name, Jack has a pretty nice team. I do want to, of course, remind you that we do now have a Venusaur on the team instead of Scullipede. For those of you that didn't watch the full video last week, or not at all, please go and do so, so that you can see why we're making that transaction. It is applied for this week, though. As you can see over to my right, Jack has a Palkia, Shaman Sky, Mega Gardevoir, just to name a few. The team, however, does look on the frail side, especially to fighting in particular. So, guess what we're bringing? That's right, the first mod on the squad is our Mega Blaziken, back once again. Now, Blaziken has sort of failed to really do anything all season, it's kind of just there as a threat. It's more the other mons that have been doing everything, but I'm really hoping that this is the week that Blaziken can get it showing. Now, I have sort of realized that it's kind of annoying to not have the opponent's team on screen at all times while I'm explaining sets, so... BAM! That's right, that's gonna be on screen from now on whenever we're looking at the actual Pokemon in question. So this will give you a constant understanding of what exactly I'm talking about through these team builders. So like we said, Mega Blaziken's here. We got Blaze Kick, Low Kick, Swords Dance, and Protect. Low Kick is actually super good in this matchup. Milotic takes a ton, Palkia, obviously the fighting weeks like Heatran, Mamoswine, and Lycanroc Dusk, as well as the quad weak Obstagoon, and Blaze Kick obviously covers the Mega Gardevoir and the Buzzwool, and the Flyers in Shaman Sky and Crobat. And I do like Protect on here because I feel like it's going to be somewhat necessary for revenge killing certain Pokemon, especially if he's got like a Choice Scarf on Heatran or Mamoswine. And we have obviously Swords Dance to round out the set. Next Pokemon on the team is our Palkia check. Porygon 2. We have Tri-Attack, Thunder Wave, Teleport, and Recover. We are, of course, nearly max special defense. Trace is obviously going to make us a pretty good switch into Heatran. The 40 special attack is to deal with Obstagoon. It allows me to 3-hit KO it. And, of course, the item is Eviolite to make us as tanky as possible for that Palkia. Seeing as his special attackers are sort of the biggest threat to my team, we have another specially defensive Mon here in Celesteela. This one, however, is mainly going to be to take on the Mega Gardevoir, while also having necessary coverage in Air Slash and Earthquake to deal with Buzzwool and Heatran, respectively. Of course, Celesteela is going to be a great Palkia switch-in as well, especially if it's spamming Spatial Rend, which is why we have Leech Seed on the set to make sure that we stay healthy. Couple that with Leftovers, and we should be pretty much much healthy the whole game. The HP is a leftovers number and the rest is poured into defense. I didn't go absolutely max special defense because I ran some calcs and it wasn't worth it. So there's your explanation for that one. Fourth mon on the squad is of course our Dragapult. Like I said, can't leave it on the bench. This time I brought heavy duty boots. Jack has a lot of really reliable stealth rockers and I'm not bringing any sort of hazard removal this week. And Dragapult is a mon that can really do a lot of damage in the late game. However, it can't really do that if it's constantly taking rock damage and putting itself closer and closer to in range of Mamoswine's Ice Shard and Lycanroc's Acel Rock. So, Heavy Duty Boots is going to mitigate that. Dragon Darts is, of course, our most spammable move here. We have U-Turn to get out of unfavorable matchups, like against the Heatran. Steel Wing covers the Gardevoir. And one of the heaviest debates I had with myself over building this team was whether to put Light Screen or Reflect as the last move on Dragapult. Ultimately, I decided that it was going to be much more likely that Blaziken would be setting up in front of something like a Choice Locked Palkia into Spatial Rend, or a Heat Rend with only Earth Power to hit it, then it would be a Mamoswine or a Crobat or a Lycanroc, so I opted for Light Screen. Jack's team looks stronger on the physical side because I have so many good special defenders, but ultimately the goal of the last move was to make it easier for Blaziken to set up. Our spread gives me enough speed for the Shaman, enough attack to do what I want to do with U-Turn into Steel Wing on the Mega Gardevoir, and the rest is just an HP. I opted for Infiltrator once again because it was pretty likely that Palkia or Mega Gardevoir could be running Substitute, and we never want screens to be a problem either. 
either. Second to last mod is of course Groudon, this time with a little bit of a mixed set. We have 236 in HP, of course another leftovers number, 176 speed which is enough to outpace Adamant Namuswine, 96 into physical defense with an impish nature so that I can tank physical hits from things like the Crobat and the Buzzwall, as well as of course the Lycanroc which is sort of looking like a huge threat based on what I'm bringing. And the moves are the most interesting part. We have Earthquake, Overheat, Stealth Rocks, and Toxic. Toxic is just sort of spammable. So is Earthquake in a sense. But the move that really stands out here is of course Overheat. Now you may be wondering why I am running a minus special attack nature with Overheat. The reason is that this kills Buzzwool in the sun, even if it's running max HP. And killing or even weakening Buzzwool is gonna be so good for Mega Blaziken because Buzzwool eats plus two Blaze Kick out of the sun if it's running fully physically defensive, of course. And once again this week, I didn't really want to take the recoil from Flare Blitz. Now, the last mod on the team is where we have a little bit of fun. So, Jack has a Milotic that he's guaranteed bringing because I have a Groudon and a Mega Blaziken, but he also has a Mamoswine, a Heatran, an Obstagoon, a Lycanroc. So, what mon can we catch him off guard with to beat everything? That's right, it's Seismitoad. Now you may be looking at me like, what the hell are you talking about? Seismitoad is not an offensive threat. No, usually it's not. However, Milotic has to run very specific moves in this matchup. Mainly, it has to run things like Scald and Toxic and Recover, and I think it's a toss-up between Dragon Tail and Ice Beam. So what do we do to deal with that? We bring Substitute and more speed than Milotic is allowed to run in this match. And then we pour a bunch of investment into HP and special defense to make sure that Milotic cannot break a sub with an Ice Beam. And there, you have a recipe for an offensive setup sweeper. Our moves are Earthquake, Power Up Punch, Ice Punch, and of course Sub. We are Water Absorb with Leftovers. The HP is of course, once again, say it with me everybody, a Leftovers number. And then whatever we didn't put in speed, we put into special defense. And it just so happened that it worked out that this is enough spadef for a substitute to take an ice beam while also being faster than Milotic to get up a sub in front of it to make sure that it does not toxic us. So that's real cool, but is it gonna work? Well, let's check out the game and find out if it did. All right, folks, here we are. Remember how Turk said I had no fighting resist in week one? Look at Jack's team. I see one, two, three, four fighting weeks and two neutrals. And both the neutrals are heavy. Please, Blaziken, be good here for once. Ugh, all right, let's roll the tape. So I'm gonna lead with trusty Dragapult against Palkia. Worried about it being Scarf, don't really care. Gonna go for the U-turn anyway. If it locks into a dragon move, I got a couple of good responses to it. My Lodic's gonna come in. I'm bringing out Seismitoad, and I'm going for a sub. And look at that, Toxic. Jack's gonna switch into Obstagoon next, and I'm gonna go for a Power Punch, and it does enough to put it into range of Earthquake. So as Jack knocks off, I'm going to Earthquake. He breaks my sub, but I knock out the first Pokemon. Palkia comes in, and instantly I'm thinking Specs, so I'm gonna switch into my P2, trace its pressure, kill off one of its Spatial Rens as it does 32% to me, which isn't that bad, and I'm just gonna go for a Recover here, make sure that it can't 3-hit KO me, and Mamoswine doubles in and knocks off my Eviolite as I go for a Tri-Attack, trying to burn it, trying to do anything to it, really. Goes for Earthquake, I Recover, that's fine. I stay in on another knockoff, and I'm gonna go for another Recover, and I'm gonna keep spamming Tri-Attack to try to get status off on this Mamoswine. But as you can see, it's Earthquake does a little too much to me, and I'm going to go down. Now, normally this would be a problem, and as you can see, I go Celesteela as my opponent goes Heatran, but I don't think the P2 dying is such a big deal because based on the calc from the Palkia, I don't believe it's specs. So Celesteela should be able to deal with it. But now I'm going to sack my Celesteela to the Heatran as it goes for Lava Plume and burns me as I try to Earthquake it. So I knew I could live a plume. I'd be okay, healthy, decent enough for the Palkia, but unfortunately burn came through and I wasn't able to survive that. So I end up sacking my Celesteela. Now the Palkia is looking a little more scary. I knock out the Heat Ren with Earthquake and Milotic comes back in and I'm going to get up Stealth Rocks knowing that Milotic's going to go for Toxic and knowing that it'll probably click it again trying to catch my Seismitoad which is a huge threat, I'm going to stay in an Earthquake. And now right here I'm going to switch into Seismitoad knowing that the Milotic has to recover and once again we get it in for free. 
Now this was dangerous. I could have lost the game by doing this, but I'm actually going to pull another risky play and earthquake again on the Palkia switch. It does 41%, which is really good because it can't switch in on earthquake anymore. I'm going to bring in my Groudon on the Palkia. I know I'm getting two hit KO. That does so much damage. That move is way too strong. And another spatial run comes out, crits me, didn't matter obviously, and it's going to knock out my Groudon. But now I get in Blaziken and here's where Protect comes through. I'm able to Protect. The Palkia goes for Thunder Wave. I was pretty sure it wasn't Scarfed and I'm going to be able to look low kick the Palkia and knock it out. Milotic comes back in and I'm able to Swords Dance in front of it as it goes for a Toxic. And right here I make a little bit of a misplay. I go for another Swords Dance. I probably should have just low kicked here this turn, but I really thought that he would recover expecting me to low kick and just let the Toxic wear down. But I am going to get a kill here with low kick no matter what. As Mamoswine ends up coming in and we knock that thing out, that could have been a pretty big threat in the end game considering I have a Seismitoad and a Dragapult left, but Jack decides to sack it off. I now go back into Seismitoad as Lycanroc comes in, goes for a Stone Edge. I think it's Choice Banded based on that damage, or it's Life Orb. And I knock out the Lycanroc with an Earthquake, obviously. And once my Lotta comes back in, it has absolutely no way to deal with my Seismitoad. I can go for Sub. I can Power Up Punch till the cows come home and end this game. Jack and I both know it's over, so I'm just going to go for one Power Up Punch. And once he says GG, I'm going to spam Earthquake. And he's just going to keep going for water moves and healing me or something of the sort. But we had pretty much agreed that the game was over at this point and... And uh, yeah, he's just going to concede here by flip turning a bunch. So he his last move was actually flip turn, which is interesting. So scald, flip turn, recover, and toxic. I was really expecting either ice beam or dragon tail, something to deal with my dragapult. But I guess flip turn sort of works, considering he had a pretty bulky mammoth swine in the back and... Maybe a heat ran that could take on Dragapult as well. I don't know. I didn't get to see enough of the set. But yeah, that's it. We end up 2-0-ing Jack. I think he played fine. I think he used his Palkia properly. I think he wasn't ready for an offensive Seismitoad. And I think that this was a super good bring. You know, the funny thing is that I had a Seismitoad in my very first season of the UPA. And I ended up thinking that it was so bad because of its four times weakness. And throughout the generation, Seismitoad has just gotten so much better. And the better of a player you are, the more dangerous of a Pokemon it is. Is. It really is a super good ground type. So that's it, guys. We're 5 0. Oh. Should be an easy run to playoffs from here on out, right? No, definitely not. Unfortunately, our toughest part of the season has yet to come. Next week, we're up against Ben, Shiny Sableye 17, otherwise known as the man who made me do this. Hit Thunderbolt, man! No! Now, back then, both Ben and I, I would say, we're not the greatest players, but things have changed. And if that weren't enough, Ben 100% has the best team in the league. I don't think there is any debating that. I won't show you guys just yet, but <laughs> be ready for like a 4-0 or a 5-0 and not in our favor this time. But anyway, guys, I'll leave you with that hype for next week. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm really hoping you guys are. Thanks again for watching. If you guys are enjoying these videos, of course, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that jazz. Check out all the links in the description down below, and I will catch you guys next week. See ya.